What's up, I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick video, I'll be showing you one of the best pieces of software you could download this year. If you're someone who plays games and records clips to share with friends or over the internet, you're probably using something like NVIDIA Shadowplay, OBS, Discord Nitro to clip things that you're streaming in Discord, the Xbox Game Bar, etc. While these are all functional pieces of software, they aren't exactly the simplest if you're someone who's just starting out. And on top of this, by default, you won't have things like a set separate microphone and game audio track, or if you're using something like OBS, it hasn't got a built-in editor, meaning you need DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, etc. And not to mention, one of the most important bits of this is the auto-clipping technology that essentially marks out interesting things from certain supported games and allows you to save them later on, such as multi-kills, etc. While some games have this sort of feature built in, this is actually super powerful. In this quick sponsored guide, I'll be showing you SteelSeries moments. In the description down below, you'll find a link to SteelSeries GG moments. When you get here, simply click free download and open it when it's done. When you get to the installer, choose OK, Next, Agree, and it'll start installing. When you reach the landing page, you'll need to sign in or create a SteelSeries account, but don't worry, you don't need any hardware, peripherals, or anything SteelSeries. It's free for everyone. After creating your account and not even confirming your email, you get this pop-up. Simply make sure Moments is enabled, and that's it. When you get to the landing page, click across to Moments on the far left. You'll see the games that are currently supported for auto clipping, which will automatically save exciting moments, multi kills, etc. By default, it'll pick up all of the installed games on your system and automatically enable them. If you scroll down, you'll see the rest of the supported games that currently aren't installed or aren't detected. If we head into the options for CS2, for example, and expand CS2, you'll see that it clips anytime we get a headshot kill, knife kill, or three kills in a round. At the very top, you'll get a few options, such as the first drop down, enabling automatic gameplay capture at the very top, whether or not to record your microphone, and finally enabling elevated capture if for some reason your games are stuttering while running this. Finally, you can also start a desktop capture to just record your desktop with the existing settings. Under advanced settings, if we scroll down here, we can more finely control our recording system. For example, choosing our default speakers for game sound, default speakers for Discord sound and things like that, and finally your microphone here as well. If you have different devices for different things here, it'll automatically record multi-track audio, meaning you can mute your Discord chat or the game sound or whatever later on and individually control all of these volumes separately. Then, if it detects a game running, auto clipping will show enabled. And finally, we get some options here to more finely control how our games will be clipped. Duration can be anywhere between 30 seconds and 20 minutes, which is pretty long. Video quality, low to ultra. Resolution, 720, 1080, and 2K. And finally, FPS, which I definitely recommend setting to at least 60. You'll get an estimated file size at the very bottom, and I'd usually recommend recording as high quality as possible. But on much lower end systems, you may notice stuttering if this is pushed a little bit too high. For me, I'll leave my resolution at 2K, 60 FPS, and video quality high is probably good enough. If we click advanced settings at the bottom of this, you can change where your videos are recorded to, which is great. When we're in game, we can use Alt and S to manually save a new clip, but we also have a few other options such as toggling our mic mute and starting our desktop capture. Pretty cool. Let's quickly give the software a shot with auto clipping, let's say CS. Call of Duty does seem to have the most granular event control at the moment, with a ton of different things that'll be clipped from Warzone, Modern Warfare 2, and Modern Warfare 3. But anyways, let's try it out with CS2. And once you're in game, you can use the Alt S hotkey. Uh, it seems like I still have it bound to plus left, but anyways, when you hit that, it should make a clip. Quickly unbinding it, Alt and S should make a sound, letting you know that a clip has been saved of the last minute or how long you've selected it. On my left, on my other screen, where I have this program open, you can see these two clips were now saved. As for FPS while in game, there's not really a difference. Just keep in mind that I'm recording two screens in OBS and the Steel Series Moments is running as well. As for FPS, there's practically no difference. Because I landed a headshot kill, it automatically clipped it and marked it. And it's been clipped. There we go. <laughs> and there we go, a knife kill as well. Pretty cool. That's been clipped too. 
When the game closes, you'll see a pop-up with some info about your last gaming session with all of the clips, total size, etc. We can choose to delete all of them or view all clips, which will take you back to the moments page with all of our clips at the very top. So let's review them. Let's have a look at maybe this one. You can click on it to open it up and you're given an editor. You can see waveforms for game audio, discord audio and chat, as well as microphone audio down here as well. Also, not to mention there's different things marked on the timeline, as you can see, buying a smoke, flashed, throwing a smoke, and finally at the very end, things that are happening. So you can very easily skip to wherever the action is, whatever you want to clip, etc. And assuming you like what you see, whatever it is, you can crop around it. So maybe move the start here and the end to just before, such as that. And when we play again, you'll see just that section of our clip. That's it. So now if you'd like, you could either export it and choose a file size, which is an interesting way of sharing these. You don't need to worry about bitrate or anything. Just mark whatever you'd like it to be under and it'll be compressed accordingly. So if you want to share on Discord and you don't have Nitro, 25 is a pretty good choice. Otherwise, if you have Nitro, maybe 100 or even original. That's it. I'll choose 25, export, choose a place to save it. And after it's done, it'll open the folder where we can now see our 22 meg clip. It aims to be somewhere around that. Opening it with VLC, for example, the quality is pretty good, and that's it. If you'd like to adjust the volume of, say, your microphone, click the speaker next to it, and you can change the volume here or even mute it out entirely, as well as maybe, let's say, Discord chat too. Like that, you've now isolated your in-game sounds and got rid of everything else or anything else that you'd like to do here. It gives you pretty good creative control. At the very bottom, you can also add effects, and clicking this, we can search for GIFs to stick on top of it, place them anywhere, as well as text and more options coming soon. Pretty good. Let's try and make something a bit more interesting. So for now, I'll close out of it in the top right and head back to our knife kill, maybe. We can find these quickly because they're auto-named and categorized as such. So I'll click this. We can quickly find the moment that we're interested in based on the icons once again. And just like that, we can crop it, go back to the start and add an effect. And we'll add maybe a sneaking GIF. Pretty good. Place it somewhere nearby and maybe cropping it to just before the action getting flashed that there replace the gif and search for something relevant maybe that one we'll stick it in place it maybe somewhere else adjust when the start and end is of each of these so roundabouts there seems pretty good adding a final gif and now we can share our clip choose maybe discord continue and once it processes at the very bottom, we can simply drag this into Discord or somewhere else. We're essentially grabbing the file here, so we could maybe drag it straight across to this Discord chat. And when we do so, we can send it as is. Just like that, we've now shared our clip. Perfect. Our GIFs are baked in, and it can be enjoyed in all of its glory. If we instead choose YouTube or Twitter or something like that, you'll see that it either allows us to drag and drop files, or it'll ask for authorization to link our accounts and upload on our behalf. If instead you'd like to export it without a watermark, you can simply use export here, choose a file size, export, and when it's done, drag it around or share it as you'd hope. That way there's no watermark inside. Pretty cool. <laughs> you can close out of it and in the future return to the same clip where all of your edits should still be saved. That's great. Ultimately, it's a great tool to leave running in the background. It doesn't take up much processing power, if any at all. And of course, if something insane happens, but you're not recording, streaming or anything like that, yet you'd like to save it, as long as this program's open, it might automatically save it for you. Or if something that wasn't detected was picked up, you can use your saving hotkey instead. It's a super exciting free piece of software that I'd highly recommend because of all of its cool little features and the fact that it's completely free. Once again, thank you to Steel Series for sponsoring this quick video. Hopefully you found this as useful as I do. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.